um, why do we still sin after salvation? Why do we sin after salvation? Salvation begins uh, the moment we receive by faith um, God's offer of what he did for us, of uh, forgiveness through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus. That is uh, exactly what the Bible tells us in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9. Okay, Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 9. It tells us that, uh, For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith in who? Faith in Christ, in what he did for you. Okay? Through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, salvation is all about believing in what Jesus did for us. It's not about uh, stopping sinning or anything, but it's all about believing. So, it has nothing to do with works. But of course, after you are saved, the Bible tells us, for we are his workmanship, okay, after we have been saved, who are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that you should walk in them. After we are saved, we should be God's workmanship. And uh, we do good works, which uh, God ordained us to do. And uh, there is nothing that you can do to be saved, uh, which is humanly, because uh, Jesus is the one who saves us by his grace. Okay? If we receive him, he will save us. It's not because of our works. Our works are not the cause of our salvation. Because the Bible tells us in John 1 verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Uh, so you have to understand that. And uh, salvation is all about you believing. But then, Jesus called it, being born again you are born again you are born by your mother but now you are born in the spirit remember what jesus said that uh, unless you be born again you will not see the kingdom of heaven and uh, just go and read uh, john 3 3 i don't have time to check that and uh, in repenting and giving up our old life okay we receive the new life jesus purchased for us with his blood there's a new life that you get, okay? Now, this is the new life that I want to show you about and uh, how to deal with it, okay? 5.17. Just uh, think about um, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It tells us about this. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, okay? He's a new creature, the old thing are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Things have become new. And in verse 21 it says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that you may be made the righteousness of God in him. So now Jesus died for our sins, and through him, because he was sinless, we got his righteousness. We are washed clean and God chooses to remember our sins no more. Remember what the Bible says in Psalms 103, 12? Psalms 103, verses 12. Remember this? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So, having understood this, it means that we have already been washed clean, absolutely. And God chooses not to remember our sins anymore. But uh, we soon notice that our propensity to sin is still part of us. How can that be since we are new creatures in Christ? We are new creatures in Christ. How can it be that we are still finding ourselves sinning? We still sin Although we are forgiven, we still fall again and again. Why? Because we are still human beings. Okay? And I want to address why we still find ourselves singing, sinning, even if we are already saved, and what we should do. Now, salvation, salvation breaks the power that sin once had over us. 
We were held by sin, but now salvation has broken that, uh, that uh, chain, okay? And uh, we were slaves to sin, and we used to serve sin willingly, as the Bible tells us. But now, we are no longer those slaves. Remember what the Bible says in Romans 6.20? Romans 6, verses 20. Okay? We were once slaves to sin. For when, when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof are you now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Hmm. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So back in the days you used to serve sin. You used to enjoy sin so much. You used to do uh, sinful things. And that God took you away from that and he made you a new creature. And now this new creature is uh, struggling. Sometimes sinning, sometimes not sinning. And he's wondering now, I'm a new creature. Why am I still sinning? See what Paul said in Romans 7, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Ah, no wonder. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I will not. But what I hate, that I do. And the, if then I do that which I will not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Hmm. Now Paul is telling us that if you're a believer and you find yourself sinning, it is not you that does the sin, but it is the sin which dwells in you, which is uh, the flesh, which is wanting to do these sins. Now, while slaves, being slaves to sin, back in the days and we were broken by god god broke this okay we were slaves to sin it was impossible to please god back in the days it was really impossible for us but right now we have been broken from that sin but why are we still sinning why do we still find ourselves doing wrong things now regardless of how often we we we, we turned of our new leaf and try to strength straighten up and uh, went to church or performed righteous deeds and uh, did all the good things we try to do all the good things we are still enslaved to unrighteousness and we stood as condemned before god upon surrender of our lives to the lordship of jesus we became god's sons and daughters now, if you're a God's son or a daughter, okay, you have to understand that uh, children, they are good children and bad children. Some children, they, they just love mocking things and they're fighting and doing wrong things. And uh, others, they're just there crying and saying, oh, Lord, please help me. We are children, children of God. We have become sons and daughters of God. Ephesians 1.5 and Romans 8.15. Go and read there. You see, Jesus, just as, the, just as children sometimes disobey uh, their parents as they grow, God's children sometimes disobey him. We rebel, we get angry, we doubt for a while. The, 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 the difference is we can no longer live lifestyles of sin because our nature has changed. That's, that's one thing we have to understand. Our nature has changed. We are new creatures. 2 Corinthians 5.17. We are new creatures. And 1 John 3.4-10. to 10, You can just go and read there. You see, a fish, a fish may long to live on the beach, but uh, once it has flipped itself into the sand, it wants nothing but to return to the water because its nature is not designed for dry land. A fish was created for the water. So it is, it is with us. You know, you are created for good, good works unto God. Remember all the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10? We are God's workmanship, created unto good works. You're like that fish. You're created for the water. But sometimes you really desire to, you know, go at the beach and just check how people are chilling at the, you know, uh, outside there. But, but, but your place is inside the water. 
the nature of those indwelt by the Holy Spirit is to live righteously. You are to live righteously. But we may flip ourselves into sin at, us, at times, but we can't survive there. It is, we can't. It's, it's not our nature. The, the new creature thrives in righteousness inside the water. That's where you thrive. And obedience to God. The degree to which we allow the Holy Spirit access to every area of our lives is the degree to which we live as God intended us to live. Now, good parents don't let their to toddlers to play on the highway, okay? They may start with a stern warning. Hey, don't, don't, don't play there. Don't play on the highway because there's danger. Okay? But if a child persists in heading towards the road, good parents come after him. And they, they, they will discipline this child and that discipline will be memorable and effective. They will discipline this, this, this child. So it is the same when we as God children stiffen our necks and uh, charge towards evil, our father comes after us. And uh, God does not allow us to get away with sin because he's a good father, okay? He's a good father. See, see Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 12, 5, 12 verses uh, 5, we can read to 11. See what the Bible says here. It says, and you have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children. You are a children of our father. My son, despise thou not, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure its chastening, if you love being uh, corrected by your father, God dealeth with you as with the sons. For what a son is he whom the father chasteneth not? How can you say you are a ch child of God and he does not correct you? He can't correct you because you don't want to be corrected. Okay? But if you be without chastisement, therefore all are partakers, and you are bastards and no sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verify for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure. But it is for our own profit that we might be partakers of holiness. Sometimes, a child is beaten by the parent and is told, don't do this and don't do that. But you, a child does not wake up and tell his parent, no, I don't want you to be my parent anymore because you beat me. No, you enjoy because he's correcting you for the right thing. Are you getting my point? Okay. So, God's discipline in our lives is one way that we can tell that we really belong to Jesus. Now, to the praise of God's glory... After we are saved, God deals with our sin differently than he did before when we were not saved. Okay? We have to understand this. God deals with that differently. Okay? We, we, he, he doesn't... If, if a child is being uh, corrected by his father, he's not being corrected like, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone who is out there in the wild or something. No. We are different. We are being corrected differently. Because Jesus says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his uh, word is not in us. So we have to confess. We have to go to God and tell him, I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, my father, for what I've done. Yesterday, no, I did this. It was not your will. Please, I'm sorry about this. But remember... It should not be a habit because uh, if you keep on uh, running across the highway, what do you think your father is going to tell you? Will, will he be waiting for you just to sleep there on the highway and do all those kind of things? He's going to slap you and he's going to do some things that uh, you will regret going back there again. So just go and re confess and tell him, Dad, I'm really sorry for you know sleeping at the highway, playing there, football at the highway. It was, it was not your intention, and I'm really sorry, and I don't want to go back there. Please help me. Whenever you see me, I pick up the ball again. Tell me, remind me not to go to the highway. That's exactly how our father deals with us. Okay? He tells us that we can confess our sins and be forgiven. 
Confession means we humbly agree with God about how bad sin is. We just agree with him that, Lord, I know. I know I did this. Just like this child, I'm sorry that I, I, I went to the highway and I played there. It, it was not your will. I know you did not want me to do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what, what I did. But you don't, confession is not uh, like uh, this child plays in the highway and then he goes back to his father and tells him, please dad, become my father again because I know I played at the highway. No, it's not like that. You're a child. You're just telling him sorry for what I did. I did this, I did this, I did this. I'm really sorry dad for what I did because you're a child. Confession in this aspect when you're a child of God, it's not like uh, you're telling him, please save me again. No, you're already saved. You can't lose your salvation. You're already a child. You can't be unborn. Are you getting the point? So confession means we humbly agree with God about how bad sin is. We admit that we were wrong and ask for his forgiveness. And the awareness of our sin and the confession of it should be a regular practice. It should be a regular practice. Whenever you're going to a wrong direction, you repent. Repentance is change of mind. You change your mind. You say, oh, I used to play at the highway. Oh, I'm sorry. From today, I'm going to change. I'm not going to play again at that highway. I'm going to be a, 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 a good child. Okay? So, the awareness of our sin and the confession of it should be a regular practice. Okay? Should be a regular pra uh, practice. You see, the, the first, the first uh, of Martin Luther's um, 95 Theses, they used to say, when our Lord and our Master Jesus Christ pay, uh, said, repent, he intended that the entire life of believers should be repentance, always turning from evil towards what is right. Okay? Should be repentance. God can pardon us and maintain uh, his justice because our sin was already paid for by Jesus. It's already paid for. There is no need to punish uh, us because he has already punished his son. Okay? Christ has already died for our sins. And everything is already put there. He took our sins. Okay? So now you're a child. You're a child. You're not asking for, uh, 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 you're not confessing your sin as, uh, you know, any other person out there. You're confessing as a child. See what the Bible says. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which were contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it at the cross. Jesus nailed all our transgressions here at the cross. He blotted out our record of sin. And nailed it there. So as we say, as we as we keep on uh, repenting and uh, confessing, we're not confessing as uh, people out there in the world. You're confessing as a toddler. If he plays on the highway and uh, he knows, notices, and comes to his senses and he realizes, my dad does not like me to play on the highway. You go back from the highway back to the house and you play where it's needed and you tell your dad dad i'm sorry i know i played at the highway i know i did something wrong i'm sorry but you don't go and tell him oh please become my father again no you're already a child but if you will not listen and you'll not repent you'll not stop playing in the highway what do you think your father is going to do he's going to chastise uh, chastise you he's going to you know correct you so, as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, okay, as we grow in grace and uh, in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the Bible says in 2 Peter 3.18, we overcome besetting sins. They are besetting sins, sins which are always... 20, let, let, let me show you. I, li I like showing you the verses because if I just quote them, uh, some people will never even read them, Okay. Hebrews 12.1 Wherefore, seeing we are, uh, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So there is a race before us and there are some besetting sins. Okay? Some sins which beset us. So, 
we will overcome them when our focus is on Christ. When we are all about true repentance, turning away from what is evil now because we have already been saved and doing what is right. Peter, he always listed, and uh, there's a point where he listed steps that we can take in developing our new nature. And, uh, and it ends with the promise that if we do these things, we will never stumble. Do you remember Peter telling us this? That if we con constantly continue, okay, when we constantly continue doing what is right, then stumbling for us will be not really possible. See what Peter says here. According as his divine uh, power has, uh, has given unto us all, things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given us unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature. If these promises which he has told us to live by, you live with those promises and you do according to what he's telling you, you'll be a partakers of the divine nature of Christ, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hmm? You'll be able to escape all this and you can read all the way to verse 10 to be able to understand even much more. Because Peter is trying to tell us to be holy like Christ is. Because Christ told us, be ye holy for I am holy. What is holy? The word holy means separate. Don't be like those um, children who are playing and they don't really care. Some children from the neighbors. No, be a different child. Whenever you fall and you do what is wrong, don't just say, ah, you see my neighbor's children are playing in the highway. No, you're not your neighbor's children. You're a child of God. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be separated. Are you seeing the point? Okay? So, when you be holy and you walk in the ways of God, you will not stumble. Our holiness is the goal. But John acknowledges, okay, John Remember John, he acknowledges that we, 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 we are still sinning. John tells us, at times we find ourselves, we, we are still sinning, yes, it's true. But uh, that's not our nature, okay? That's not our nature. John 2, verses 1, see what it says? That uh, my little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. You see, these are children of God. That you sin not. And if any man sin, because we will sin, even if you are a saved person, you will find yourself sinning. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ the righteous, who is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Not for ours only, because we are children of God. Not only for the children of God, but also for the sins of the whole world, even to the others who don't believe. So John here is telling us, you should be holy. Yes, but I know at times you will stumble, at times you will fall. You, you will find yourself in wrong things. But strive as much as you can to walk in the way of righteousness. And repent whenever you find you're doing what is wrong. Change your mind. Repentance comes from the root word metanoia, meaning change of mind. Change your mind and do what is right. And the God's desire for us, if you understand God's desire for us, is that we don't sin. He, he desires us to be like him. We do what is right and we don't sin. Okay? That is God's desire for us. And also that we, we one day, our sanctification will be complete during the rapture. When we will be raptured. When we will go, when Jesus will come at his, uh, at his rapture time, not the second coming, but rapture, that time we will be sanctified completely. Okay? See, 1 John 3, 2. 1 John 3, verse 2. There's a time when our sanctification will come. It says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. For we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. 
When the rapture will happen, our bodies will be changed and we'll no longer struggle with sin. We'll no longer fight with sinning and we are saved but you are still thinking of doing the wrong old things. We will be changed in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the incorruption, for the corruption must put on incorruption. Our bodies will be changed and we are given new bodies. And we will see Christ as he is because now we'll be clean. We'll be in the body the same as the one which Christ had when he was living earth. But uh, until that time, we can still inhabit fallen bodies in a fallen world and we struggle with flesh and sometimes lose the battle. But we will not be lost. Jesus himself intercedes for us as our great high priest. We will not be lost. No matter how much we will fall and uh, we find ourselves sinning and doing what, but as long as we are falling as believers, not we are falling as non-believers. And remember one thing, you have to understand that God is our father and he will punish us whenever we do things which are wrong. When we sleep on the highway, he will come and he will give, you, uh, give us a few uh, uh, punches and beatings because of what we are doing. So we should live righteously. But still, even if we fall, Christ is praying for us. He intercedes for us. See what the Bible says, Romans 8.34. Who is he that condemns? Who is condemning you? You are already saved. Who is trying to condemn you and tell you that you will go to hell? That you will lose your salvation? It is Christ that died here. Yeah. Rather... It is he that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us. Jesus died for our sins. So let no one tell you that, uh, condemn you and tell you, oh, you will lose your salvation. No, you can't. You can't. Because Christ died for your sins and he is interceding for you. He's praying for you every day. And until that day, until that day, as John has said, that we are sons of God and it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We will be transformed in a twinkling of an eye and we'll be righteous back again. We'll be like Christ because Jesus did something for us. So, we now understand why we still sin because we are still in the sinful nature but we already purchased, we already uh, changed we're in the, we, we, we have Christ in us, but our bodies are still struggling. Until the day that we will be changed and our bodies will be changed and we are given new bodies, we will still struggle with sin, even after salvation. Okay? And if you're not saved and you're out there and you're struggling now in the true sin, not as a child, but now you're struggling as a, someone out there in the world who is lost, Please get saved. Salvation is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel, which it's all about understanding why and how Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? The Bible says that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the reason why he died. He died for our sins. How did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Why is the blood important? Because Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given you the, uh, uh, the blood to make atonement for yourselves. Why should we atone with the blood? Why should we remove the blood if the life is in the blood? Because the wages of sin is death. But there is a good thing which was done 2,000 years ago. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood for us. And if we believe, we are saved. All you need to do is confess to Christ and tell him what you have believed. That Jesus now have understood that your blood was shed for me. While I was still a sinner, Lord, you died for me. I now believe you and I accept that atonement. Be my Lord and my Savior and change me and make me new creature, as you have said. All that you need is that. And once you believe that, then my friends, you're saved. And uh, all this will be a different story. Okay? Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been blessed. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And also share the video for others to hear. And also subscribe to watch new videos which we post every day. God bless you and have a good day.